This is the Midland Home Service. Come all you gallant Irishmen, <coughs> wherever you may be. I hope you'll pay attention and listen unto me. I'll sing about a battle that took place the other day between a Russian sailor and gallant Morrissey. We present the song carriers. Twas in Terra del Fuego in South America. The Russian challenged Morrissey and those words to him did say. I hear you are a fighting man and wear a belt I see. Indeed, I wish you would consent to have a round with me. The ninth in the series of programmes in which Ewan McCall introduces the traditional songs and singers of Great Britain and Ireland. Then out spoke brave Morrissey with heart both brave and true. I am a valiant Irishman that never was subdued. For I can wear the Yankee, the Saxon bull and bear. In honor of old Paddy's land, I still the water. <laughs> Morrissey and the Russian Sailor, a song about a prize fight fought with bare knuckles in the golden age of the square ring. The theme is perhaps not typical of our folk song, but the realistic treatment is fundamental. On the whole, Folk song themes are pretty much the same as the themes of formal and pop type songs. It is in the approach that the main difference lies. The great theme is love, but in formal and pop songs the beloved is generally unattainable and the protagonists appear to have no other function than to love and be loved. They appear to live without having to work. When they are given names, these are generally drawn from classical mythology, or in the case of pop songs, the names tend to be foreign ones, or simply, my gal, my baby, my honey, etc. Now in the folk songs, the characters possess the kind of names that we hear every day, Willie, Johnny, Maggie, Barbara, Helen, Mary. And as often as not, we are told in the course of the first three or four lines that Johnny is a weaver, a collier, a ploughboy, and that Mary is milking her father's kai, or tending sheep. Again, in formal and pop-type songs, there is a total absence of topographical detail. The love exists in an idealised landscape, or in a vacuum. There is an equally loose disregard for time, which is, so to speak, frozen. The folk songs, on the other hand, are usually quite explicit. Johnny, a brisk young sailor, goes out one bright May morning just as the tide is flowing and encounters Mary milking, reaping, washing or bleaching her clothes on the banks of a sweet purling stream. The most important difference, however, lies in the action of the songs. In the formal and pop songs, the action is usually minimal. A man loves a woman, or the other way round, and he or she is frustrated and unhappy. At the end of the song, the characters are unchanged. In the folk songs, the lovers either consummate their love and find happiness, however fleeting, or alternatively, one of them is jilted by the other and laments the fact, or goes off and finds somebody else. Perhaps it would be true to say that in the formal and pop songs, we are asked to examine an abstract concept of romantic love shared by a he and she who are themselves only abstract projections of human beings, whereas in folk song we are asked to observe the effects which love has on specific human beings functioning in a specific set of circumstances. Here is one of the most widespread songs of amorous encounter in the English language, Seventeen Come Sunday, sung by Harry Cox of Catfield, Norfolk. As I walked out one May morning, one May morning so early, I overtook a fair young maid just as the day was a-dawning with my dear oh my dear, feather riddle, feather a little I owe. I should have black her stockings white and her buckle shone like silver. She had a dark and rolling eye and a hair hung down her back with my dear oh my dear, for the riddle of a little eye oh. Oh, how old are you, my pretty fair maid, how old are you, my honey? 
She answered me quite cheerfully, I am seventeen, come Sunday with my dear Amada, for the little love, for the little love, oh. I said, my dear, can you love me, can you love me, my honey? She answered to me quite cheerfully, I dare not for my mammy with you do, Ramada, for the little love, for the little love, oh. If you come round to my mamma's house when the moon shines bright and clearly, I will come down and let you in so my mammy shall not hear you with my dear Amanda. For the riddle love, for the riddle I owe. I did go down to a member's house as the moon shined bright and clearly. She did come down and let me in, and she laid in my arms till the morning with my dear Amanda. For the riddle love, for the riddle I owe. She said, my dear, will you marry me? It's no your chance, nor never. And if you do not marry me, then I'm undone forever with my dear Amanda. For the riddle love, for the riddle I owe. The pipes and drums of my delight as through the woods we ramble. The pipes and drums are my delight, and I'm happy with my soldier, with my dear Amanda, for the riddle of, for the riddle I owe. Scots folk songs are particularly rich in characterization, and in the Bothy songs of North East Scotland we see this at its best. Now from Bamshire, a song of rural courtship. Though a fairly short piece, it is crammed with realistic detail. In the first verse, we are given the locality, the time of day, and the occupation of the suitor. In the second verse, the love is physically consummated. The laconic mention of this fact somehow underlines its inevitability. Thereafter begins an almost ritual courtship. The girl takes her young man, a ploughman, to meet her parents. He sits with them in the kitchen until nine o'clock, by which time he feels that the period of initiation into the girl's family is complete. He takes his leave, accompanied by the girl, to the corner of the lane where they kiss and come to an agreement. Six months later, his feeing term ended, he returns to the girl and they are married. In the final verse we are told that they have two children and enough land to keep a cow. Here it is, Athenside, sung by Frank Steele of Banff. Says I come and be Ethan said where gently flows the rolling tide. Athia Media stood by my side, sick looks gave me and stare. I own she was the beauty brave that ever trod the blaze of gay. We have rice paint that we were next from Boreith and say. She still me tell her father's hymn, so bashfully as I did then. Says he, my young man, you're far to him on Boreith and say. They sat me doing so well to please, and treated me to bread and cheese. And the beer is a yakri through my knees, sick looks go me and still. They sat me doing so well content, the old man he fell news was bent. The court this made it with my intent, the truth to you I'll tell. But nine o'clock begins to strike, and the plume and lads begins to spit. Thinks I to myself, and it's time to flatten the robin for their beds. I started up and to my feet, and bade the ma a blight good night, and spear the road the men's a gecht with courage to turn bold. She shone me by yon barn door, and judge you or twa hearts were sore. The pair to snack to meet no more on Boreith and side. 
But he's come back to us in the spring, and on her finger placed a ring, and a law we her need no did young to breathe inside. This couple they've got married new, and they've got bairnies one or two, and that's my lands would keep a coo on bury eighth and side. And now another example of economy, a love story told in three short verses. The lovers have already met and are courting before the song begins. In the first verse, we are told that a weaver confined to his loom loves a young woman who is courted by many young men. The weaver is disturbed by this and we are prepared for something momentous to happen. The second verse does not, however, develop this situation but merely serves as an interlude in which we glimpse an idyllic moment of courtship where the weaver and his love walk together in a lover's world, a shady grove serenaded by amorous blackbirds and thrushes. In the third and final verse, the weaver proposes marriage, is accepted, and everything moves with the inevitability of time itself. The song, called The Wee Weaver, has a wonderfully handsome tune full of all kinds of unexpected turns. It is sung with great skill by Mrs. Bridget Tunney of County Fermanagh, Ireland. I am a wee weaver confined to my loom. My The trade or occupation of a character in a folk song is not mentioned merely for the purpose of giving a line the right number of syllables or to provide a convenient rhyme. With the folk, a man's work is important, and it is not uncommon to find songs in which a girl, faced with a choice between two suitors, finally makes her decision by weighing the advantages and disadvantages of the suitor's occupations. Here is such a song, The Plantains of Loch Lero, sung by Charles Gillies of Angus. Was on a bonny summer's day, the woods and the valleys they were gay, and I made up my mind for to spend the day near the plantains all of Lero. Twas there I saw an awful sight between two lagy darn and name. For they were court in the servant dim near the plantains all of Lero. E no them was a benchman to tread, the other a plumen born and bred. Stand by, cried the plumen, I'll charm the maiden, he followed her to Loch Lero. Sir, oh, sir, did the lassie rue, the slighting, o' oh, the benchman true, and the plumin' lad he gedaughty rue, 
hear the plantains all all clear But to know the benchman has got you see Another cane love for his company And often he'll wink his bonny blue ee When he tells her a blue clock The humours of courtship and the tricks and stratagems of lovers are, of course, numbered among the great subjects of folk song. The Scots ballad of the Keech in the Creel belongs in this category. The Keech in the Creel, which is Scots for the lift or ride in the basket, is found in many European countries and has been known in France as a fableur since the beginning of the 14th century. In Italian Renaissance versions of the tale, it is the painter Masaccio who plays the part of the ingenious lover. Here, singing an Irish version of the ballad, is Michael Gallagher of Belik, County Fermanagh. As I rove down through Newry Town, some fresh fish for to buy, Twas there I spied a bonny wee lass on whom I cast a fond eye. Hurray, ah, fall all the da, hurray, ah, fall all the da, do. How would I get to your chamber lower? How would I get to your bed? My father he locks the door at night and the keys lie under his head. Hurray, ah, fall all the da. Hurray, ah, fall all the da, do. Get a ladder newly made with forty steps and three and put it to my chimney top and come down on a creel to me. Hurray, ah, fall all the da. Hurray, ah, fall all the da, do. No peace nor ease could the old wife get with dreams running through her head. I'll day my life to the gay old wife, there's a boy in my daughter's bed. Hurray, ah, fall all the da. Hurray, ah, fall all the da, do. Then up the stairs the old man crept and into the room did steal. Silence reigned where the damsel slept and he never twigged the creel. Hurray, ah, fall all the da. Hurray, ah, fall all the da, do. My curse attend you, father, what brought you up so soon to put me through my evening prayers and I just lying down. Hurray, ah, fall all the da. Hurray, ah, fall all the da, do. He went back to his gay old wife, he went back to she. She has a prayer book in her hand and she's praying for you and me. Hurray, ah, fall all the da. Hurray, ah, fall all the da, do. No peace nor raise could the old wife get till she would rise and see. She came on the stumbling block and into the creel went she. Hurray, ah, fall all the da. Hurray, ah, fall all the da, do. The lad been on the chimney top, he gave the creel a haul, broke three ribs in the old woman's side, and come again the wall. Hurray, ah, fall all the da. Hurray, ah, fall all the da, do. When it comes to describing work and commenting either directly or obliquely on the labourer's attitude to it, folk song has no rivals. Here the realistic approach is a prime necessity, and it would appear that the subject is the exclusive property of the people who actually do the work. The early 19th century seamen working on the packet ships, clippers and East India tea wagons did not see themselves as jolly jack tars. That is a landsman's concept. For them, it was hard tack and blue-nosed mates, long voyages and short rations. In the same way, songs made up by the farm labourers often reflect the countryman's love-hate relationship with the land. This is particularly true of the West of Ireland songs. To the hired farm labourer working the submarginal lands of the West Coast, where they had learned to subsist on rocks, bogs, salt water and seaweed, the land was an enemy, compared with which even the British Army appeared as a refuge. The following song expresses this attitude perfectly. The Rocks of Bourne, sung by Colm Keane of Glinsk, Connemara. And my costly, you dear Sweeney, you have me nearly around. It was eating by the fireside with your doggin in your mouth. It was eating by the fireside from clear daylight till dawn. And I'm afraid you'll never be able to plow the rocks of bone. 
I rise up proudly swinging and come along with me. He gave your heart a feed the words before you start away. Don't feed the rough with turn off. Take her down at the green lawn. And then you might be able to plow the rocks of and I wish the Queen of England had sent for me in time. When I was in your heart and in my youth and prime, I'd fight for Ireland's glory from clear daylight till dawn. And I'm sure I would be able to plow the rocks of bomb. Even religious subjects are treated in the same realistic way by the folk. Just listen to this fragment of The Holy Well, sung by Mrs. Smith of Tarrington, Herefordshire. As he fell out as my holy day, as my holy day so wise, sweet Jesus, he asked that his own mother dear, whether he should go to play. To play, to play, dear child, she did say. It's time that you have been gone. And don't let me in, no complaint upon you. But at night when you do came home. Oh no, dear mother, such a thing should never be. And that you do know farewell And you go down to the smile on Mary's town As fair as the old I dwell And there you will find one of the finest children That has ever any tongue could tell if the flash boys and girls, the tattered horde of runaway apprentices, highwaymen, cut purses, and their malls and doxes, appear to receive a disproportionate amount of attention in the folk songs, then it must be put down to the fact that the period which produced them was one of a society rigidly divided. And as far as the poor were concerned, any attempt to beat the system was worth recording and applauding. Almost all the songs celebrating the exploits of these bad lads and hard cases are good night songs, that is, they are confessions made at the foot of the gallows. And crude as their poetry often is, they manage in some extraordinary way to convey complete understanding of the social and human compulsions which create the criminal. Here is Harry Cox of Catfield singing one of the most widespread of the good night songs, Newlin Town. In Newland town I was bred and born At Stephen's Green where I died of scorn I served my time as they said trade, And I always was a roving blade at seventeen I took a wife And I loved her dearly as I loved my life All for to keep her both fine and gay A robin I went on the king's highway I robbed Lord Golden, I do declare, and Lady Mansfield in Grolin Square. I robbed them of the gold so bright, and I took it home to my heart's delight. To Covent Gardens we went straightway. Me and my wife we went to the play. Ned Fielding's gang there did me pursue. Taken I was by the cursed crew. Now when I'm dead and go to my grave, a distant funeral let me have six highwaymen for 
cattle carry me, give them broad swords and sweet liberty. Six highway men for to bear my pull, give them white gloves and sweet ribbons all. And when I'm gone, they will tell the truth. Here lay they wild and they wicked you. Another good night song is Tedburn Hill, with a tune which has served the rogues gallery more than once, for it is also associated with Sam Hall and Captain Kidd. A defiant tune eminently suitable for an age in which a poor man's only guarantee of recognition lay in his talent for dying well. No slow and doleful march to the scaffold this, but a brisk ride through cheering crowds out for a day's holiday, with street hawkers doing a hot trade, and the ballad mongers singing their wares to all who were sober enough to listen. Tedburn Hill, sung by Jack Endicott of Chagford, Devon. High of candles, lily white, hanging high, hanging high. High of candles, lily white, hanging high. High of candles, lily white, and I stole them all by night. But me life will pay for all when I die, when I die. But me life will pay for all when I die. I have twenty bullocks in store, that's no joke, that's no joke. I have twenty bullocks in store, that's no joke. I have twenty bullocks in store, and I'm up for twenty more. Every rogue shall have his lot, so shall I, so shall I. Every rogue shall have his lot, so shall I. I rode up Tidburn Hill in the cart, in the cart. I rode up Tedburn Hill in the cart. I rode up Tedburn Hill, there I stopped and made my will. But my life will pay for all when I die, when I die. But my life will pay for all when I die. I climbed up the ladder by the rope, by the rope. I climbed up the ladder by the rope. I climbed up the ladder and the hangman pulled the rope. But the devil of the word I spoke coming down, coming down. But the devil of the word I spoke coming down, coming down. The Irish peasantry, deprived of their land and crushed under the burden of taxes, had cause to hate the forces of occupation. The bailiffs and stewards employed by both native and foreign landlords were particular targets for abuse. Not infrequently they were compared with the devil, a comparison which in the songs at any rate favours the devil. So here finally is Michael Gallagher of Fermanagh singing The Devil and Bailiff McGlynn. One fine sunny evening last summer I was straying through Condine to me when a pair of queer playboys belonging before me I happened to see. Now to know what these boys were up to, a trifle I hastened my walk. And troth I soon learned their profession when I got within range of their talk. Well, one of these boys was the devil, and the other was Bill of McGlynn, and the one was as black as the other, and both were as ugly as sin. Says I'll boy, says he, I'm the devil, and you are a bailiff, I see. Is it the devil himself, says the bailiff, well, that beats the devil, says he. Now a gossin run out from a cottage and off with him over the fields. May the devil take use of his mother as she rattled a stone off his heels. Ah, uh, why don't you take the young rascal, your highness the bill, if he cried. Oh, it was not from her heart that the wish came, the devil, he smiling, replied. Then close by a small patch of potatoes, a bonne was striving to dig when the owner ran out and she shouted, May the devil take you for a pig. Says the bailiff, there's now a fine offer. Why not take the bonus, says he? Oh, it was but from her lips that she said it, and that's not sufficient for me. 
As they jogged on a gas and spied them and into his mother he sped. Ah, oh, mother, says he, there's a bailiff. Then she clasped her two hands and she said, May the devil take that ugly bailiff. Says the old boy, be dad, that'll do. Twas straight from her heart that came surely, so bailiff McGlynn, I'll take you.